um, is somebody who's very, very special. Uh, special to me. I met her, as I said, at the beginning of this year. I went on an energy retreat to Cape Verde, which was an incredible experience. And it was one of those things, I was in a difficult place, and um, I decided to go for a week to Cape Verde, and it wasn't work, you know, which was a big deal for me, you know, and I think I really, I really like encourage you all to take time out of your busy lives to focus on you, because it's really, really important. And, um, and on this energy retreat, uh, I met Fiona. So she basically was running it. Damien Mark Smith, I know lots of you know Damien, he spoke here two years ago. Uh, and he, he, he ran the retreat and then Fiona was running the retreat. So he kind of organized the retreat and Fiona was running it. Um, and yeah, she did a lot of meditation. It was amazing and it really, it really changed my life. It was incredible. I now meditate nearly every day. Um, and yeah, it's just amazing. So I feel, I, when I asked her to come and be involved, I felt very, like, it's really wonderful to, to share her with you guys. And then she's doing workshops as well, so, um, but yes. So, Fiona McGuire, who is a transformational coach, a speaker, an author, and just an awesome human being. But it was really amazing. The, the day after the workshop, we, we all met up for breakfast to say goodbye to each other. And Rachel comes across, running across this field, but bursting out crying. And I read energy, that's, that's my living. And I'm like, huh? You know, scene doesn't make sense. Energy is fantastic. So I stay there because the energy is fantastic, otherwise, I would have ran. <laughs> And she gives me a big hug and picks me up and I'm like dangling going, what's going on? <laughs> and she's like, I can feel my fingers and toes. And I'm like, fantastic. I didn't know you couldn't. <laughs> she hadn't told me. But I did know all that, was, all that she went through on the three days because I was constantly reading her energy and the eight other people that was there. That's my job. And um, she really went above and beyond. She really did. She really dug deep and Damien every now and then would get read and he'd go he'd go and talk to her or he'd go near her and I'd be like, Damien, stop, stay, don't do anything, leave her in it. But she's really hurting. That's the point. I know what I'm doing, trust me, it will be okay. She's okay. I'm really nervous about the microphone falling out of my pocket and breaking it. But you know, so what I do is I go really deep with people but I take you on the journey. I've been a therapist for 21 years, so I know what I'm doing. But anyway, let's get to you, because that's the most important thing. Who wants to release the past and be who they are now? If you do, raise your hand. You're in the right place, and we're gonna have fun, do it as well. So I'm gonna talk about imagination and reality is the same thing. Who believes that? Who thinks it's a load of crap? <laughs> Great, I love proving things to people. So the whole point of talking about imagination and reality being the same thing is that is going to prove to you that you can change and be who you are. Once you understand that imagination and reality are the same thing, everything and anything is possible. So before I get to the main point of that, I'll just tell you few sentences about myself. <coughs> so I'm a qualified psychologist. Before that, I was a photographer. And people were like, someone asked me last night, so what have they got in common? People. I want to understand what makes people tick, why people do what they do. So I was a documentary photographer. And I studied psychology, hoping it'd give me all the answers. It gave me none. Four years, <laughs> university, <laughs> in debt. Didn't really work for me. I worked as an assistant psychologist and thought, hold on, why are we taking so long to make children, because I've got kids, didn't want to work with adults, why are we spending so long working with children to make them better? I didn't get it, but all my kids got better. But 
they, they still got brought back into the system. It was a bit like prison, really. They was in the hospital, they got released. A couple of years later, they'd come back. I quit. I was like, this doesn't work for me. It's not working for the kids. I want to find something that works. So I became a physical therapist because I burnt out of being a psychologist. And then it took me some time to develop my own therapy. And I developed it, and then I got it insured, which basically means that it's accredited. And, and I've been doing that for the last 10 years, and I love it because it works. And I do it mainly online, um, because that cuts down the people's noises in their head. They're not worried about what they look like. I don't care if you turn up to your appointments naked, as long as you do your work. <laughs> you know, it doesn't bother me. You're on a computer screen. You can have the camera on or off. It really doesn't bother me. So I'm going to demonstrate to you that imagination and reality are the same thing by telling you a case study. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So the case study is of a 13-year-old boy that came to me with OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Do you know what that is? Yes. Yep. Yeah? Okay, great. So I'm going to call him Andrew. His name is not Andrew, but for legal reasons, I'm going to call him Andrew. So Andrew came along, I'd already spoken to his father, you know, got all the stuff that his dad wants to tell me, and wrote it all down like a good therapist. And then when Andrew came on the computer, I said to him, what's up, Andrew? And he's like, oh, my friend, what's up? You know, he's 13, you know, cool dude. And we just chatted for five minutes. And as soon as he knew that he could trust me, and I knew that he could trust me because I'm reading his energy the whole time, I said to him, Andrew, your father says you have OCD. He says, I do. I said, what does OCD mean to you? And he said, it's like a boss in my head that never shuts up. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's a really cool way of explaining OCD, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to like this kid. We're going to get on. So I said to him, oh, that's really interesting. Is it a boss like it's bossy? And he said, yeah. And I said, tell me more about that. He said, well, you know bullies, they're really bossy. And I was like, yeah, and then he started talking about it. Now, I knew that Andrew had been bullied, and um, I thought that's really interesting that the OCD is a boss bully in his head. And I also knew that Andrew had um, been through a traumatic experience when he was a baby. He was born with some sort of medical disorder, and they... For whatever reason, he got separated from his mum straight after birth. Now that is very traumatic for a baby. You know, he had to be for medical reasons, well, so they say, but he he was suffering from abandonment issues. So he, basically abandonment issues mean you can't trust anything, anyone, yourself, the environment, and all the signals between your head and your body get confused, you know. so. This, this was Andrew's past, this was Andrew's reality. He created OCD to keep himself safe. So for him, his OCD would tell him to do stuff. And he would do it because he believed that if he did these rituals, then he, he would not be in danger. Or more importantly, his family. To him, more importantly, his family wouldn't be in danger. So I let him talk about his rituals. You know, we, we discussed it and I understood what it was from his point of view. And then I asked him, do you ever not have OCD? And he said, of course I don't, don't be stupid. So it's like, okay. <laughs> do you ever not feel the symptoms of OCD? He said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, when does that happen? He said, well, if I'm feeling really good. I said, so when are you feeling really good? And, you know, he explained, which basically meant when, when he was relaxed. So I was like, oh, cool. Do you know how to relax yourself? And he was like, and, and he'd done all these things which weren't relaxing, they were stimulating. So I taught him how to relax, which is, if you go on my workshop, I'm going to teach you how to relax. It might seem like a really stupid, easy thing, but believe me, 99% of the population do not know how to relax. And I'm going to teach you something, and within five minutes, you're going to be totally relaxed. So when I got him totally relaxed, I said to him, how does that feel? And he says, it feels like it's never felt before. So I said, well, tell me what you mean. And he said, well, I've got this thing running around my body. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, 
is it good? And you say, oh, it's brilliant. I was like, what is it? And you say, it's like positive energy. And I was like, oh, cool. Well, you know, I'll take that. You know, because <laughs> the point is, I'm, I'm asking him questions to ascertain what his reality is. Okay? Imagination and reality are the same thing. Why? The brain doesn't know the difference. Why doesn't the brain know the difference? Because your whole life is your perception. If we all looked out this window, we would all see different things. Different things would be important to us, and that would be what our mind would concentrate on. Okay? So if you all look back here now, because I'm a bit vain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what would happen is your mind would notice different things, and that's because of the filters in your brain. And the filters in your brain have to do with your age, your experience, your culture, um, what's happened to you and what you believe about the world and what you believe your place in the world to be. So that sounds really complicated, but it's not. It's just psychology one-on-one. -on -one. So when you look at something, all you see is your perception. You don't see the reality. So if you've got a partner, have you ever said to your partner, you don't listen to me, you don't understand me? Well, that's because they're living in their own reality, and you're living in your own reality. And you might share the same bed, you might share the same house, you might even work together, but your realities are going to be different. Why? Because of your perception. So getting back to Andrew, um, I said to him, oh, so is this positive energy, is it everywhere in your body? He said, no, it's not in my, it's not in my head. I said, oh, that's interesting. What's in your head then? He said, well, that's where the box lives. And I was like, oh, fantastic. What does the boss look like? And he was like, um, I don't know, it's in my head, I can't see him. And I was like, well, take him out of your head, you know. And he was like, can I do that? And I was like, yeah, just do it. So he took it out of his head, and he said it looks like the devil. I said, well, what does the devil look like? He's bigger than a house, he's way bigger than me. And he starts, he starts to shake. And I said to him, Andrew, take a breath, go back to the positive energy. Well, he gets straight back to the positive energy. I said to him, where's the devil? He said, it's over there. I said, what are we going to do with him? He said, we're going to kill him. Can I do that? I like, yeah, we can kill him. What? How are we going to kill him, Andrew? Because he's got to come up with it. It's his imagination because it's his reality. He's like, I'm going to throw the positive energy at him. Yeah. I was like, fantastic. Yeah. But what are you going to do with it first? He says, I'm going to make it into footballs. It's like, fantastic. <laughs> so he threw a few footballs at the devil, the positive energy. And he said, it's getting smaller, but it's not dying. I was like, well, what's bigger than a football? And he said, a beach ball. I said, what's bigger than a beach ball? And he said something else, which made sense at the time, I can't remember. I was like, right, let's make some of them, and throw them at the devil. So anyway, he killed the devil. <laughs> yeah. So then I said to I, I spoke to him about something else, because change day is, is a therapy technique. And then I said to him, is the devil gone? He's like, yeah, we killed it, it's like, fantastic. I said, is the OCD gone? Oh, no, 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 that's not gone. And that's, that's, that's the kind of response you get from an adult. And I asked him why, and this is the response you get from an adult. Well, I've had it for years, we can't get rid of it in 40 minutes. And I'm like, but Andrew, didn't you tell me you killed the devil? Yeah, I killed the devil. And didn't you, wasn't the devil the OCD? Yeah, I said, well, if it's not there, why can you have OCD? And he thought about it, and he said, I've killed the devil, haven't I? The OCD's gone, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it's gone. That's it. It's gone. I said, so what's life going to be like now? And he said a few things. And he was really happy. He was really happy. And the energy in his head had changed. The actual, like, you might believe me, you might not believe me, and it doesn't really matter at this stage. But, you know, I could see inside of his head, and his neurons were changing in a different way. So he'd rewired his brain. Because OCD, it's a mental health issue. It's just the wiring in your brain is slightly different than it should be. And you can change that any time. How do you change that? You get happy. You know, you talk to other people with OCD. When they're happy, they're not experiencing their OCD. Why? Because the, the wiring in their brain is different. I'm a scientist. This is not rubbish. This is pure science. Look it up in a book, you know. Well, you'll probably Google it nowadays, but anyway. <laughs> um, so the whole point is, it shows that his OCD was his reality. 
But when we actually broke it down, it was all in his imagination, right? Because imagination and reality is the same thing. Have I lost anyone? Does this make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. So, everything that's happened to you, and I'm not belittling anyone in this room, believe me, we've all got skeletons in our closet. We've all had things happen to us which are not good. And some of them are gonna re rate more traumatic than other things. Uh, this is just life, okay, in the 20th century, 21st century. But the point being is if your imagination is your reality, you are what you think you are in any particular moment in which you are. So therefore, you can release the past. It's as easy as just changing your mind. And psychologists like to tell you that's hard. I'm sorry, that's BS. It's not hard. Use your imagination, your creatives, the one step ahead of the game. So you, all you've got to do is imagine what you want to be and you'll be it. And I know you've read that a million and one times and people were quoting different therapists to me last night and everything else. Great. But there's, you know, the secret to the secret is it bloody doesn't work, you know. But what does work is, is knowing the science behind it and knowing exactly how to do it. And once you know how to do it, you can change anything. Isn't that right, Rachel? Yes, absolutely. You know, I didn't even know that Rachel had MS. I didn't know what her diagnosis was. I knew what I could see and I knew what I could feel. And I won't share that with you because it's private. And I was just waiting for that to break. <coughs> because I can look at everyone and I can tell what is, what is in there that needs to break. And I can ask you questions that will help you get there, and then you break it. And there's other techniques as well. And if you come to the workshop, I'm going to be sharing some powerful techniques with you. It's an interactive workshop. You're going to be doing it there and then. You're going to get the benefit there and then in the workshop. This is a workshop that I normally charge over a thousand pounds for. Why? Because it changes people's lives. Why am I here doing it with you guys? because I love Rachel. And I know that Rachel's heart is in the right place. She really lives with it. She really wants to help all of you. And if you can release the past, I'm not only helping you, I'm helping everyone you know. And that's what inspires me. That's what brings me on in my life. And that's what I want to help you do. I don't know, I don't know what the time is. Yeah, that's amazing. But, and, have we got time for questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do questions? Yeah. Do you have any questions? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm internationally based. I do online. I actually, I live part time here. I live part time in Portugal. You know, and part time wherever my free spirit takes me. But I work quite a lot. I'm available online. Anything else? Oh, I'm available right here this weekend. <laughs> And I know there's some amazing people that are speaking and they're doing workshops and everything else. But if you wanted to change your place to my workshop, I got told you could do that. So, <laughs> come on, we all got to market ourselves, you know. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? And I'm around if you want to come and pick my brains. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs>
Uh, those of you that know me know I'm, oh, I'm not very good at... Is that gone? No, yeah. there it is. Uh, I'm not very good at sitting still. <laughs> so I went to Cape Verde to kind of relax, and I was like, and I went and sat on the beach, and I was like, right, okay, try and relax, try and relax. No, 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 I need to go surfing. Let's go surfing. And I'm just learning to surf. Uh, Scott Parkin is teaching me, he's been teaching me. Um, and so I decided to go and, and hire a board and go and try surfing in a place I didn't know, in waves I didn't know, on my own. It was completely bonkers. Um, and they made me wear these funny shoes, these funny kind of things on my feet because they said there are sea urchins. Be careful of the sea urchins. <laughs> and so, now I'm going to try and say this quickly because it is not. Anyway, I went out, I was surfing, I felt I was rubbish, uh, and I felt a, a, a prick in, in one of my toes. And I was like, oh, ouch, oh no, I've got a sea urchin. Ugh. So I took the board back in and I took my little booties off and noticed that I had three sea urchins in one big toe, and two in the other. And I didn't feel them. Uh, and people, you know, have since told me, gosh, it's really painful when you have sea urchins in your toes. But because I had numb toes, I didn't feel them. Uh, and I managed to get this guy to, to help me kind of dig them out, and it was quite horrible. Uh, and it was hilarious, though, because it turned out he was like a, a professional um, Kite surfer, world champion, the most famous man on the island. There he was, like digging sea urchins out of my toes. It's hilarious. Um, and he's digging them out, and like, he kept saying to me, "Let me know when that hurts." And I'm like, "Yeah, no, it doesn't. I can feel anything." So digging them anyway. He got them out, and then the next day, I put my trainers on to go for a run, and I had this pain in my little toe, and I took my shoe off, and there was another one in my little toe that I hadn't felt at all. And I managed to get that one out, and it was big, that one was really big. So that, it, was a re it was a really weird thing, because I had a real feeling when that had happened, that it happened for a reason, but I kind of felt like it was because it was sort of like the universe saying to me, Rachel, sit on the beach and stop, you know, just try, just relax. Um, but it wasn't until then I went on the retreat, the retreat started, and I, I explained that I had, yeah, I think I'd said something about my numb things and toes. Um, and then it was three days of incredible, lots of meditating, lots of kind of, yeah, releasing stuff. It was very, yeah, it was just awesome. And the, yeah, the last day I woke up and the feelings had all come back. And my toes and my fingers. And I know that sounds a bit weird, and like, how is that even possible? Because having numb things and toes, you know, it's to do with the neurons in your brain and, but it works. So there we go. So and that was thanks to. There we go. So I just realised that, like, you're probably sitting there thinking, "Oh, meditation. I know how to do that." Well, wait, God, you're really talking those. <laughs> 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 what Rachel is actually talking about is like doing energy techniques. So I, I'm teaching you how to work with your own energy perceptions, thoughts, and emotions. So when you work with me, you actually get um, PDFs of the exercises because I want to empower you to be able to help yourself to change. I'm not a psychologist. I don't need you to come back to me time and time and time again. I don't want that. You know, there's seven billion people out there that I'm, I'm going to get to one day. <laughs> so I don't need to keep somebody more than six or 12 weeks. I empower you to do what you need to do. So you go away. So it's a meditation that you're not going to learn from anyone else. They're actually techniques. So I say that. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. But yes, so awesome. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, that's my little miracle story of my fingers. But they're fine now, so, so that's all good. Um, right, okay, so. <laughs>